Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look at the Asus PB287Q uh, and it's the 4K monitor so I always forget it but it's 3840 by 2160 now 4K it's all the all the rage everyone's you know kind of shouting about it at the moment because it's the new high resolution it's we've kind of moved on from 2560 1440 and 1600 and now we're moving on to this, but it is still four HD screens technically, all on one panel. Not that they've put four together and kind of laced them together, it's still one panel, but there's that many screens, over four million pixels. So it's an obscene amount of work to expect your graphics cards to you know, try and do. So we're even gonna be using some pretty high-end kit to test this with, and you'll see that some of the frames per second can still get kind of scarily low. Um, and we've not even bothered to try and attempt to use um, like any of the Metro games or anything when we did get on with the testing later on. But anyway, but it's a TN panel, which a lot of people are going to kind of go mm, about, but it's 599 quid. If we were talking an IPS panel, and then to be fair, this has got a one millisecond grey to grey, not black to black, which is kind of, un, um, uh, it's a good thing to kind of put on there that it is, they are very specific about it being grey to grey. Because some other manufacturers, even with you know not so high resolution screens, it will say for argument's sake two milliseconds or five milliseconds, and that's not black to white. It's grey to grey, and they kind of miss it out because the the black to white can take longer than grey to grey. Just so that you're aware. Um, but so we've got a one millisecond response time, and to be honest with you, at the moment TN panels are the only things that are really capable of driving that. Sixty um, um, uh, megahertz refresh rate, which is great for things like um, if you have your um, uh, right, had a brain fart. Uh, the 60 meg megahertz refresh rate is great for things like VSync. That's what I wanted to say. Although VSync will kind of sync up with the the way that your monitor goes anyway. But 60 frames per second is a really nice kind of uh, point. You know, it's the type of thing that we want. Also. Thank God, YouTube's gonna be running out 60 frames per second as well. Now I know a lot of people scream about the 120 hertz screens and stuff like that, but a 4K 120 hertz screen at one megahertz, would, uh, one millisecond would just be stupid money. Just like uh, an IPS panel will be. Now as I will you know, show you like, as we go through the video, we are gonna be talking about the colors and shadows and stuff like that. And I, the only way I've got to try and show you this is with my camera. So we are at the mercy of the camera, more importantly, and this is the thing that you do all need to remember, is focus. Because I'm trying to get the camera to focus on the image that's going to be moving around in front of it. Um, so, you know, it will try its best, but if you get any bits where it looks like it's gone fuzzy and stuff, just give it a moment and it will kind of catch up. Now, I've watched some of this back. It doesn't happen too often, um, but it's kind of, we have to zoom in a bit because it gets a bit confused with the bezel and the actual screen. Uh, but I will try my best. Obviously, trying to review a monitor on YouTube, it's not exactly, there's no guide or anything on it, so I'm just kind of having to wing it and make it up as I go along. Um, but yeah, we're going to crack on with this now. I'm going to bring you in, I'm going to show you it. We're going to, I'll show you the actual specs list, I'll show you the rotation and all that kind of stuff. And then what we will also do is I will show you some performance footage, and it'll also give you a chance to see about uh, the colours and all that kind of stuff as well. Okay then peeps, so an up close look at the screen. Now obviously with monitors, there's not a humongous amount that we really get to talk about. You can see the specifications uh, in the graph and everything in a minute. But there's a few things that we do need to show you. First of all, and it's something that a lot of people ask about and that's the adjustments that you get with the monitor. So I've got me um, spec list by the side and I'll bounce it up just for you quickly. And then uh, what you can do is you can pause it if you want to read it, but I will show you it again in a bit as well. But reading from this, we have a tilt of plus 20 degrees to minus five degrees. And that means you can tilt it back up to 20 degrees and then you can put it back straight again, but you can always knock it back another five degrees as well. I find tilting it back like this can get away from ceiling lights, obviously like I have in the office but also when I find this is most useful is uh, where, where I normally do my filming in the office I get a lot of reflection from the sun outside tilting it down like this seems to minimize that especially on camera anyway so we've got that there is a 60 degree swivel 
on the base, that it can swivel around on the base, but because of the neoprene that I use on my desk, all it's going to do is swivel around on that. You can, there's 150 millimetres of um, height adjustment, and it literally just goes straight down and straight up, and it's dead simple. It's not sprung or anything, so it will stop where you want it to. It's very simple. I was doing that just with grabbing it with one hand. For those of you that like portrait rather than landscape, I do have to step in and put two hands on this, but you can flip it round so that you've got a humongous... Um, yeah, there's no point in moving the camera though, really, is there? So we'll put this back round again. It does need the stand to be right at the top to be able to do that though. And you do have to uh, pivot it a little bit or lean it a little bit to be able to get it to go there. So we've got that. So that's all your levels of adjustment. Um, what I will do is I will show you the buttons in a second, but we obviously need to have that powered on and we've not got it connected to a system or anything at the moment. The only thing I will say is, I will say in a minute, is that the, there's no um, uh, indication on the front of the monitor what the buttons do. But when you do press them, it does light up on the screen. It just it, Initially it can be a little bit confusing, but persevere with it. Don't just write it off straight away. I'm just going to um, uh, change the camera angle now, rather I'm going to move the monitor so I can show you the uh, connections in the back. Okay, so when we uh, flip it round, I've had to put it on quite an acute um, angle so that we can get to this you can see that we've got two HDMI's and then a display port now you do need the display port for the 4k uh, but also up here you can see a black and a green audio connector green is the audio input if you're not using well I don't really know really because I've used it with display port and I've got the audio out fine so I'm not sure why we'd have an audio in but anyway the black is for your headphone uh, with using DisplayPort, it does actually send the audio down the screen, which is quite off-putting for me, because I generally don't have speakers on mine. Um, we can see at the bottom, just quickly, that the, uh, you can, um, uh, there's your adjustment. And then at the, the top here, you have got a uh, screw so that you can take it off the base. But, and this was the other thing that I wanted to show you, is this. On the back, you can unscrew these screws and take the screen away from the base completely or the stand completely and then that's a hundred by hundred visor uh, wall mounts if you want to have multiple monitors mount it, mount it on your wall have one of those adjustable stands that you can move around all over the place you can just buzz this off and it uh, it comes off really easily we can also show you if I remember which way to do it from there we go I'll show you how to turn the screen around just so that you can see it is actually a really sturdy screen and when I was saying to you before about having to tilt it to rotate it that was all I meant you just have to give it a little bit of a tweak but it's actually a really sturdy uh, base it's the same one that they use on the um, 278 which is the 1440 screen uh, and I've been using that for a long time and it's never broken it's never kind of like got saggy or anything um, it just it, it, it is a just a really good quality screen and considering the price of all the rest of the bits like the you know the immense price of the panel and stuff like that to have this kind of quality stand is actually quite refreshing. Now, this may seem a little unorthodox, but the screen on the left is the 278Q, which is the 1440 IPS screen. The screen on the right is the 4K287 uh, screen. And it was just kind of a way for me to show you that the even though the bezel on this was quite good um, you know, when it was released, they've got an even smaller bezel on the 4K screen. I would go as far as to say is that the material, the plastic used in the construction of the 4K screen is actually bl a lot blacker. It's a, <coughs> excuse me, it's a lot darker. It's actually more pleasing to the eye as well. But that thin screen, I know there's not going to be many of you out there that are going to want uh, to run multiple 4K screens. But obviously it is the done thing uh, recently so that, you know, we get them as thin as humanly possible and Asus really haven't disappointed here. Also, one of the things I can say is that the, the bezel width is pretty much the same right the way around, whereas with the, uh, the 287, it's actually got a much thicker bezel at the bottom where the switches are, because the switches are on the bottom. With the, the newer 4K screen, where the switches are around the back, they've managed to keep that bezel that little bit thinner at the bottom as well. Okay then, peeps, so screen is off. You can kind of see me in the background dancing around. I've closed my blinds as best as I possibly can do. So we, we've not got a completely dark environment. We've got kind of an average room. And I kind of, I do have to tweak things to try and make the camera see things better. 
Now, obviously, my camera is epic compared to the last one at reproducing colours, and I have done a few little snippets of this, and I am actually quite happy with the way that the camera shows you the, the colours of the screen. But the, you may be thinking, why have you not turned it on yet, Tom? Well, I'm going to do it now, and I'll show you the test trick in a minute. But it's good to see a run-through, because one of the things with screens is um, light bleeding, colour reproduction, making sure it's all evenly lit, and it's great to see it start up. So, as it starts to come on, the red light is the keyboard below, by the way. So we've got the start in Windows now. Now you can see that that's uh, obviously a black screen and you can see that there's no humongous amounts of light being bled in from the side or dark patches. But also what I've done is I've put the um, black background on uh, with the, the, the new OC3D tweaked colour logo. Anyway, right, so reason why completely black background is we can see any patches on the screen. We could also see if there was light bleed, we'd be able to see patches where the light was bleeding through. It's also a really good way for us to see how evenly and uh, evenly lit everything is. So it's you know not too all over the place. Now I can tilt the screen a little bit for you as well. Now one thing I will say is that the uh, viewing angles on this are fucking brilliant. You really can take a huge move on it and it's still all very visible and by that I mean I can zoom you in to the top up here and once the camera does its focusing you can see everything is still very um, able to be seen and I'm just going to make sure yeah so I just wanted to make sure that the little thing on Steam didn't have the user details on it but you can see quite easily that it's all still very readable and we probably got that on a 45 degree turn there. Now I know that's not a massive amount but considering that I'm trying to show you this with a camera. Okay so we're quite well known for using uh, Unigen but the good thing with Unigen is there's a lot of colours and you can uh, really up the ante with the resolution. But what I'm going to do is from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to 1920 by 1080 and then once I've done 1920 by 1080, we'll go into 2560 by 1440. Beyond that, we'll go into system, which is uh, obviously 3156 um, uh, by 2160. Let me I look, because I, I can never remember. 3840 by 2160. Yeah, I'm really in with all this. So, we're going to do 1920 by 1080. Now, what I'm going to do is I will just cut you between... Um, in the, in the video, so you won't have to go through all the rigmarole of it opening and stuff like that. Now I know when we're doing stuff like this, we are, you know, you're going to be relying on my camera, which is going to be filming this in 1920 by 1080. It's all going to be very dependent on how good your monitors and everything are. I'm fully aware of all this, but I've got to try and, uh, you know, show you the quality differences on screen. So hopefully, uh, by doing it this way, we'll be able to, or you'll be able to see the difference. I mean, compared to what I was seeing before, I'm already very apparent, you know, very aware of the differences between uh, this and when it's at 4K. But then when we get to 4K, not only can you see things uh, actually start to struggle a bit, as in things aren't quite, you know, moving as smoothly as they were before, but the amount of detail in this now is absolutely ridiculous. Now, I'm going to try and bring you in so that you can see some of this. Now I'm obviously not sure how well the camera is going to cope with all these changing images but it's just as I said I'm just trying to show you. Now another thing while we're zoomed in there look at the colour reproduction on that considering this is a TN panel. Colours are bright, they're vibrant I mean this for a TN panel I can't kind of stress how nice and clear and you know the clarity on this. It's probably one of the best TN panels that I've ever seen. I've been very new coming to the IPS party um, and I still use TN panels on my desk on my main rig um, but the quality on this puts my the monitors that I use to shame. Anyway so that's enough of that. 
So for this part of the video, we really need to do a bit of testing so that you can uh, get a feel. Um, and yes, it's all about the screen and stuff like that, but at the same time, people are gonna wanna know how much power am I gonna need to drive a 4K screen? Because let's face it, it's technically four 1920 by 1080 panels there. So, if you click the link in the bottom left-hand corner of the um, uh, review, then it will take you to the Overclock 3D website. And what we've done is uh, we've tested um, a single 780 tie and uh, SLI 780 tie because you do need a fair bit of power as you're going to see when we run some of these tests and I'll pan you around and I'll show you the the test rig so we've got an uh, Asus Rampage Black Edition Rampage Extreme Black Edition in there there's a 4960X 4.5 gigahertz got two um, Republic of Gamers GTX 780 tie matrixes Corsair AX1500i Corsair uh, H105i, 105 rather, then we've got GTX Neutron 240GB for the operating system, then we've got a uh, Force LS for the games and like Steam and stuff like that, and then the case is obviously our custom uh, test rig. Uh, 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 a standard one of them is the uh, Corsair 760T, but we've um, added all the graphics and you know done a lot of other bits and bobs to it just to make it prettier for the videos. Now, if you go to the website, we've done single 780 tie and uh, SLI 780 tie. For those AMD fans out there, I haven't got two matching Asus 290Xs. And to be fair, one is it's all right, but you know, when it comes to you know doing this, you'll see in a minute you do need big balls. Now, another thing that people I know are going to moan about is they're going to say, "Why am I running the games maxed out? You don't necessarily need." all the AA turned on. Well, if I turn the AA off, it means we can't compare the results with the other screens and our other results that we've done previously. So we're just gonna stay with it as we always have done and keep everything maxed out so that we know that, you know, if this is something that you wanna do, you wanna turn all the bells and whistles up, this is the kind of power that you're gonna need. Now, all I'm gonna do is hit enter. We've got Tomb Raider, um, we've got it 4K res, everything turned up to the hilt and we'll run the benchmark. Now I'm actually gonna let you watch this through so that you can see any stutters, you can see the quality, you can see the colors. Um, I know a lot of people would want a frames per second counter up in the corner, but you'll obviously get to see that at the end. This is more about us actually having a look at the picture quality. Um, you know, think about this, we're reviewing the screen itself so that we're, you know, now we're thinking about how does the screen look in there? What do the colors look like? What do the shadows look like? My camera is uh, having a, a bit of a, a hissy fit with some of this. I think it's trying to focus on the uh, the outside until she gets bright. So I'll zoom you in a little bit more and hopefully it will cope a little bit better. And it's now realised she has a face. So, don't forget we're running 780 Thai SLI with a 4960X on Tomb Raider. And we've got minimum frames per second of 49.1, maximum of 81.7, and then an average of 62.5. Yeah, brilliant, Tom, move your phone. Right, 62.5. Now what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm now, just for the sake of the video, going to turn all your anti-aliasing off and run it again. Right, so we're running again, this time with the anti-aliasing off. So you can watch it again, and I'm just gonna let you watch it through and you can make your own decisions. I do 100% understand that, you know, some of you may want to tweak this, but some people can see the differences, some people can't. If you can't, you can obviously turn it off and you can have your maybe slightly higher FPS. I can already see a couple of jaggies, it's driving me crackers. Um, uh, other people, do you know what I mean? It really depends. So I'll give you the two. We've not even bothered putting these results in on the in our graphs for the website because to be fair, it's to try and explain the difference between the two and the graphs time and time and time again. Every time we reuse the graphs, it just becomes such a chore and you'd end up with like a thousand words just explaining what the fucking differences in the graph mean. Right, 
So we're getting near the end now because my camera's realised she's got a face again. I'm disappointed. I think I've got a girl camera because it's not staring at her boobs. If it was a boy, it would be staring at boobs. Now, there we go. Minimum frames per second, 74. Average frames per second, 88.7. 101 for the max. So you've got a good old 26 um, FPS boost there by turning the AA off. Obviously, you could just have it on a little bit. You don't necessarily have to have it on max. But that's your answers, boys. That's how different it looks and how much the performance is affected if you turn the AA um, down or off. Okay then, just another quick one. We're gonna do Hitman Absolution. Now, when we do this, we've got it all um, uh, maxed out. But what I will do is we'll do it the same as we did with Tomb Raider. I'll do it with the AA, which is the results that are in the graph. And then I'll do it without the AA, uh, just so that you get an idea on the performance differences. And you can make your own minds up, where, you know, however possible with the filming and the screen and your monitor and stuff, on the quality difference. Um, but don't forget, click the link to go through to the Overclock 3D website. You can see all the pictures and you can see all of our graphs and stuff like that. We've also got um, a 295 and 295 Crossfire in there as well. But anyway, what we're going to do is we will go start benchmark. Now, I will let you watch this because, again, it's good for you to see the uh, quality differences once my camera decides, there we go, that it wants to look at that. Now, I'm not going to sit you right back out here because you can see all the, the outside and the computer will have a little bit of, sorry, the camera will have a bit of a spaz. So I'm going to, as it's doing now, it's only because of the, it's trying to focus on the colours. Um, so I'm going to zoom you in that little bit there so that you can see it better. We'll see the results and then I'll, I'll go back and we'll turn the AI off and we'll run it again. All right, we're getting near the end now. Wait for the fireworks. Now again, when you're doing this, you, this is a great one for colours. Okay, so there's the results. It did seem to take an age to finish towards the end. Now, you can see something quite surprising there. It does say that we have a minimum frame per second of zero. Uh, so there was obviously a huge dip there at some point. Um, I wouldn't say that it was, uh, you know, kind of like fluctuations because of the two cards or anything like that, because obviously the minimum and the average, uh, sorry, the maximum and the average are so close together, but we've got a maximum frames per second of 46.6 and then an average frames per second of 27.8. But now I'm going to uh, restart it. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the anti-aliasing uh, down to zero. Okay, so I've stood out the way this time, although you can obviously see the, the tripod shadow in the background because the sun's decided to come out. Now don't forget we are just filming the screen here, so you're at the mercy of your monitor, YouTube, rendering qualities, excuse me. These are actually meant to be blurred because of the shadows, because of the benchmark and everything like that, just in case you're, you know, you're wondering. Um, Obviously, there's a lot of lights and all that kind of stuff all going on with this. But so, yeah, I'm, it's just for me, really, it's trying to show you the, the colours as best as I possibly can, but also so that you can see performance differences as well. Coming down to the point where the uh, fireworks are going to be again. There we go. Now, minimum frames per second, 78. I think we might have had a balked run before, to be fair. But we've got, uh, there's a staggering, staggering difference with the benchmark on this with the anti aliasing and turn off. Minimum 78, maximum 167. Average is now 92. So, make your own mind up about the quality, but that's the difference uh, that it makes, at least with this, by turning the anti aliasing off. Because uh, obviously, it, it, where there's so many pixels, there's so much more AA to be doing. So the cards obviously are working so, so much harder. Um, so if you are having problems with your, your 4K screens, keep that in mind.
So then peeps, congratulations for making it to the conclusion. I hope it wasn't too boring. I'm most certainly up to any constructive criticism on how I can make things uh, like this better in the future. Again, this is very trial and error because I don't generally get a lot of monitors to do and I know I point a camera at them daily, uh, but with such a high resolution and stuff, even I could see that the camera was spazzing out a bit because it didn't quite know what was going on. It doesn't seem to be, um, uh, it didn't seem to have problems like this with some of the other screens. Maybe it's because of, you know, a specific lighting or something like that. But anyway, so moving on with the uh, award and then we'll talk about the conclusion in depth. So the, the award is a gold award. And to be honest with you, it, was, it wasn't a particularly hard one to kind of go with. Uh, and the reason why we went gold rather than performance, because obviously £600 for a monitor isn't the cheapest thing in the world. But when you look at some of the prices of the other 4K monitors that are out there at this present moment in time, or at least when they first started coming out, even six months ago, you were looking upwards of kind of £900 for a 4K screen. This is one of the first ones to come out as an accessible price. Now, prices may fall, but then again, that's something that happens with technology anyway. This is part of the, the price falling, but £600 for this at the moment is, is actually a very, very good and um, a competitive price as well. You've got the Asus build quality there. I can um, speak volumes for the, the stand and the mount and all that kind of stuff because I've been using very similar Asus monitors for a couple of years now. And the, when I use them, they, they don't just sit on a desk. They're getting moved around the office all the time. They're getting taken to shows. They're getting shoved up in the loft. They're getting put here, put there. Do you know what I mean? I've done a lot with mine recently because of the, the office refurb and everything getting moved around, all that kind of stuff. And they're still here. They're still working. And they're still, you know, they still look perfect and everything. And they still work and everything all right. So I can speak for that. Now with this, the actual quality of the stuff, uh, the, uh, the 278, which is the one before, I need to look at the box, yeah, and the 278 is the 1440p, which was the one before. That was an IPS panel. That was also 599 quid, but it only had a resolution of 2560 by 1440, and it had a 5 megahertz response time. We've now got the 4K screen, so we've got a much denser pixel um, rate on the screen itself. Uh, it's a TN panel now, but it is a very good TN panel. The only thing that I can really say, obviously comparing a TN to an IPS shouldn't really be done because they're very, very different in the way that they do things. Now, the only thing, obviously I'm switching from on one test bench uh, to my right, I've got an IPS, and now I come straight over to this so I can see the differences very, very clearly. Now, the blacks aren't black, but they, on TN panels, they generally never are. Um, they're very, very good, but they are, you can tell that they're grey. If you're going to be someone that's going to have a TN panel on your desk already, it's going to take this out of your box and put it on your desk, it's going to blow your mind because the colours on this are very, very good. It's not going to be up to the level of a perform uh, performance, a real high-end photo editor or video editor or something like that, which these are the people that are going to be paying obscene amounts of money for you know colour reproduction and stuff like that. But as far as a TN gaming panel is concerned, the quality on this is probably up there with the best I've ever seen. It certainly puts uh, the ones that I've got on my desk to shame. And that's not just because of the, um, the actual high density and the, obviously the high resolution. It's actually the way that the colours in that are all being um, reproduced. It's, it really is very, very good. It, like I said, it's probably as good as you're going to get before you do need to start thinking about spending eye-watering amounts of money trying to get this resolution on a 4K screen or, you know, all that type of stuff. Um, but as far as uh, a £600 4K resolution, one millisecond monitor goes, I don't really think that we could have asked for much more. It's, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, uh, the only thing that you do need to kind of keep in mind, boys and girls, is that if you're going to be trying to play, um, you know, Tomb Raider with a single 760 on a 4K screen, you are severely going to struggle and you're going to end up having to turn all kinds of stuff down to get it to run. So even though this is a well-priced monitor, you're still going to need to have a lot of graphics card power to push this. And just so that I'm saying stuff so that other people, you know, because... It's not necessarily something that may come up in other reviews, but don't be surprised if when you get your 4K screen, your graphics card runs a bit hotter 
Also, don't be surprised if you're um, if you've got like one of those wattage testers or you've got Corsair Link where it gives you the readout. Don't be surprised if you've got it on 4K that uh, your system's pulling more power because with this rig that we've got here at this present moment in time, going from 2560 1440 up to 4K resolution, the system was actually pulling uh, 65 watts more power and the graphics cards went up by about four degrees as well. So just kind of keep that in mind. It's something that generally comes up on the forum. I bought a 4K screen and now my, you know, my, it's pulling more electric and my graphics cards have got otter. Well, they will do because you are going to be raping the absolute back end out of your graphics cards, you know, stressing them this much. This remember, it's technically now trying to drive essentially four HD screens all at once. Um, so, you know, just a kind of a couple of little pointers there for you as well. Um, but it is an epic screen, but obviously you're going to need plenty of other epic kit to run with it. If you do click the link and go and have a look at the review on the Overclock 3D website, you can see the difference between a seven single 780 tie and SLI 780 tie as well. So it can give you an idea on, you know, the differences between the games. Obviously we did run them both with it all maxed out. Turning the um, anti-aliasing down, as we've shown, can make a huge difference, but that's completely down to you. The reason why we run ours maxed out is because it's uh, an easier point for us to just be able to go, the game was maxed out, because there's too many people out there that type before they think and start going on about, oh, what about this? What about this? What about that? It's maxed out, mate. We couldn't do anything else. It was done. Um, so, it, it, you know, it's just, it's just us trying to keep things simpler. But... Obviously, I've shown you a quick little hint in the video, and then when you get it on your desk, you can make your own mind up. You can go and turn it up, and your graphics card's gonna cry, but then you can make your own observations with your own eyes with it on your own desk. If you do wanna turn it down, and you prefer a little bit more frames per second and a little bit less eye candy, that's completely down to you. At least we give you the worst case scenario rather than misleading you, trying to make it all sound like the bee's knees because we've turned every posh thing off possible and it's basically running, you know, not very well. But anyway, I'm gonna leave it at that. 599 quid um, and it, it, gold award. Can't really say much more. There, we couldn't give it anything else. But for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you, out.